Hi everyone, I'm Kathy Fisher of StraightUpFood.com and I'm going to show you how to make a date pecan crust today for the pumpkin pie. And it's going to come together pretty quickly. So I've got everything ready here. And what you'll need is a food processor. And in the food processor, we're going to put a half a cup of pecans and one and a quarter cups of oats, just regular rolled oats. We're going to put it all in the food processor. I've also got a half a cup of cinnamon here that I'm going to add in and I've already measured out. We're just going to blend this until it makes a fine flour, about 30 or 40 seconds. I usually like to stop once and assess it and just kind of put it between my fingers and see if I want it any finer. That actually looks pretty good. So now I'm going to add to that some dates. These are the dates that I normally use. They're called medjool dates and they're not a dried fruit. They come off the tree like this and what you need to do is just take this little end piece off and then if you cut them open, I usually cut to one side of the pit. There's a pit inside that's very hard so you want to make sure that you remove that and then after that I just cut it into like six pieces. So I've already measured out my five dates here. You can use any kind of dates but medjool is what is easy to find around here. And we're just going to blend that up until it starts clumping. Alright, I feel it. It's getting there. It's clumping a little bit. I want it a little bit more. Alright, so now it's, it's clumping just a teeny bit. It takes a while to get the oil from the pecans to mix in there and then it starts to come together. So at this point we just need a little bit of liquid to make it into a dough. So I'm going to use one and a half tablespoons of soy milk. You can use any non-dairy milk that you like. Now we're going to blend it again. Check it. Nice. We're getting there. That's very nice. I think we're there. All right. So now just take your dough. You might want to put it into a bowl first before you start putting it in the pie pan or rolling it out. Put it into a bowl. And just get it into a nice, a nice ball here. Cutting board. All right. It's nice and, and doughy. I've got my cutting board all ready. I've also got my pan ready. And I'm just using a standard pie pan, not a deep dish or anything extra big. And what you can do, if you don't have a rolling pin, is you can just start pressing it into the pan with your fingers. Like so and just working all the way out to the edges, making it as thin as you can get it and as even as you can get it. So that's one way to do it. That takes a little bit longer. What I like to do is roll it out with a rolling pin. Now the easiest way to do this is to get a flexible cutting board, lay it down, get a piece of parchment paper and put it over the top. This is parchment paper if you've never seen it. And then get your rolling pin and just start rolling it out. And then you can lift up the parchment paper to kind of see how it's going and even turn your cutting board and roll the other direction. And this will take a little while. It takes a little finessing, a little muscles to get it nice and even. Nice and thin. So my guideline is to try to get it as thin as you possibly can without it tearing or breaking. 
but the dough is very forgiving. If, if something goes awry, you can just patch it, and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. All right, so let's, let's look at that. I'm kind of aiming for a circle. I'm going to cut some off the bottom here, and I'm just going to put it in the parts that are missing. So we'll put some there, put some over here, just try to approximate a, a circle. Put the parchment paper back on and keep rolling. Turn it again. And we're aiming for about an eighth of an inch thick. And I made the recipe a little bit a little bit larger than is needed so not to drive you crazy with not having enough dough. Alright. So this is looking good. Let's hold up our pie pan and see how we're doing. We wanted about an inch or so bigger than our pie pan. So that looks really good. I'd like to put a little bit more dough kind of here. And maybe take a little from over here and put it over here where there's a gap. So you can steal from other places. It's not a problem. Maybe I'll leave that there. All right. Now as you work with the dough, it's good to keep in mind that it does get warmer. So the longer that it's out and you're working with it, it's going to get a little stickier. So we want to be somewhat efficient with getting it into the pan. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the top off. We can even reuse this. We're going to get our pie pan here. Now we're just going to Turn this upside down and set it on top of the pie pan, somewhat centered as best as we can guess. And what I do is I take my tapered spatula here and I just help the dough get off of this, the cutting board. It happens pretty easily. This way you don't have to use any flour. Okay. And there we go. So now what you do is you just kind of ease the crust into the corners of the pie pan. We're going to take our knife. We're just going to go around and trim the edges. on the blog I just left it like this with the edges just like this. If you want to you can make cute edges with a fork. You can go around and put a little edge like this. You can use your fingers to poke some decorative edges in. You can also use a measuring spoon if you want to make little little uniform grooves in the crust. So whatever you like. You don't need to poke any holes in the dough. It's, it's not like butter or lard and flour crust where it's going to puff up. It's not going to shrink either. Okay. So the next step is I like to put my pie pan on a cookie sheet or this is a pizza pan in case anything flows over when it's cooking later with the filling in it. Um, it's also said to make the crust a little crisper, so I like to do that. Now we're going to pre-bake this crust. 
slightly. So just put a piece of aluminum foil over it. And tuck it in. That was a big piece. And just be loose like that. Then we're going to bake that for 10 minutes at 375.